How's it going, everyone? Last week, I talked about my favorite form of media to take in would be live concerts. So this week, I had the impossible task of breaking down my favorite form of live concerts, and that is emo music. So what is emo music? Why would anyone like emo music? And how can emo music make you happy when the songs and lyrics are so depressing? So in the early 2000s, this new wave of music came in, and it was the emo music, and everyone loved it. It was something very new. Whenever songs came out before this, it would just be subtle verse, chorus, subtle verse, chorus, subtle verse, chorus, 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 end song. The verses would be sang in monotone or sang medium, and then the choruses would be sang heavier, and then emo just came in and disrupted the whole rhythm and the whole the whole blueprint, if you will, of how to make a song. These emo bands like My Chemical Romance, The Used, uh, Fall Out Boy, Taking Back Sunday, they came in and they would sing their hearts out all the way through the song. They would sing a verse as if it were a chorus. They would sing a verse and hold a note out longer than the chorus. And then they get to the chorus and the chorus would still be extremely catchy and very poppy where it would just get stuck in your head for weeks and then you would just keep coming back for more. So this new wave of music just kind of took over and the lyrics were pretty depressing. The lyrics were kind of based off of someone with low self-esteem and that's why you saw a lot of younger people relating to it because at, at a younger age we kind of try to find our identity and find out who we are. And so but it would make us happy because you had the drums were very upbeat. High percussion drums, very fast drums, and then you had fast guitar it was a bit metal, kind of like metal guitar because there was distortion to it, but it was fast guitar with power chords. And then the bass wouldn't just follow the same tone as the guitar. It wouldn't just follow the same frets on the board and just play along with the guitar. The bassist had a sound all their own. The bassist would move up and down the board playing its own tone that stood away from the guitar, but kind of fell into the rhythm of the drums. And all this music put together, this fast rhythmic, catchy poppy beat with a guy singing his heart out all the way through is just a huge mess of emo music that we took in and we loved and i still love today and emo music the lyrics still are relatable today of course not as much as they used to be like you take an old fallout boy song where tonight these lyrics will deliver you the words that i can't say tonight i'm writing you a million miles away so that just sounds like some beautiful poetic verse but what he's really trying to say is that he's writing the song, he's singing the song, but he can't really say how he feels in person. And I'm finding out in this class with our studies, we're finding out that people actually be able to say things through social media, be able to text things on a phone, say things on a phone conversation, but it's much harder to actually have that conversation face to face. So even though we may not be insecure, we may have more confidence than we did when we were 13, we can still relate to these emo songs and some of the lyrics still are relatable to some of the issues or some of the things we see today. And I still love emo music. I still listen to it and I just don't wear the black eyeliner or have the skinny jeans. I can't rock the emo look, especially at 33 years old, but I still love taking in the music. And I hopefully after listening to this, you kind of have a better understanding of what makes emo music emo music and how someone can enjoy it so much. Thank you.